everyone. Welcome to Good Knits. I'm Sherry, and this is going to be podcast episode 10. For those that are new here, because I know there's been a lot of recent subscribers join, just a little bit about me. I am an expat from Canada that is living in the Netherlands in Amsterdam with my husband and we've been here for the last seven years and we are actually just coming up this month, I believe February 27th, on our seven year anniversary. So I can't believe time has really flown. Um, it doesn't feel like we've been here that long, but we absolutely love it. On this channel, uh, obviously you can expect to find a lot of knitting content but also I really try to be transparent about my journey and my learnings. And so I really try to get into the details of where I struggle with my own projects and skills and what I learn so that hopefully I can help other knitters so that you don't face, face the same challenges as me or you at least know what to look out for. So if that's something that resonates with you, I hope you'll stick around and subscribe and tune in for future episodes as well. I, on that kind of vein of topic of being transparent and sharing my own journey, I'm also trying to work on a bit of a series that digs deeper into certain topics like how to sub yarn and what to look out for. I know that's been a big topic, but also things like what I've learned about choosing interchangeable needles, um, how to use digital tools such as Ravelry. So I'm hoping, you know, maybe once a month to start releasing uh, a bit of a series along those topics. And if you have any suggestions for topics that you'd like to see a bit more detail on outside of a traditional podcast episode, please go ahead and drop that in the comments and share it with me. And if it's something that I know about, or maybe even something that I don't know about, I will try to create some content and do a topic around that because maybe I can gather some input from the community as a whole. You also may have noticed that I changed my name a little bit on here. So I have completely dropped the by SK to the good knits. Uh, I also did this on Instagram. I just realized that I never liked the end of that. Uh, and I only really did it when I started my Instagram because there was a few other good knits accounts but since none of them are all that active, I've decided since I'm regularly putting out content, I'm just gonna go full on into Good Knits as, um, as the name of this channel and my Instagram. On today's episode, I am going to dig into the three main whips that I have. Uh, I don't have any finished objects. I also don't have any acquisitions, so I'm expecting this will be a bit of a shorter episode than usual but I figured I had enough to say on my current whips that I would just go ahead and record now um, before I finish some of these pieces. And I also started a blouse cowl last week on Instagram. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today, share the details, because I know quite a few of you mentioned that you'd be interested. So if you missed that, I'll provide a bit more information on it today. And I also have uh, the winner of the 2000 subscriber giveaway to announce. So let's dig into that first. Uh, I am happy to say that the winner is Nitty65106. Congratulations. You've won the five stitch markers from Firefly Notes. So please go ahead and contact me directly via email or Instagram and we can get the address so that I can ship that out to you. I picked the winner for the stitch markers from all the great comments that I received around how people decide how to sub yarn for their projects. And the winner was randomly selected, but I will say I'm quite happy that this comment won because it actually taught me something as well. So the comment was, if you want your garment to look like the original, it's helpful to stay with the same spin type, worsted versus woolen. Worsted have all the fibers lying in the same direction and tend to be a bit shiny. Worsted look more fuzzy and matte. I was honestly really surprised reading this because I have never heard of worsted versus woolen 
And I think that explains a lot um, around maybe why my Salty Days yarn looks quite a bit different than the original yarn called for in terms of drape and structure. So that was really eye-opening for me and something that I will definitely include to look for in one of those kind of upcoming special series videos when we talk about subbing yarn. So congratulations, Nitty6 5106 you are the winner of those stitch markers. I also really want to thank everybody for all the really lovely comments on my last video. I was quite open about my experience with the Salty Day sweater and all the mistakes slash learnings that I had on that project. And it really came through how much that meant to all of you. I got a lot of really incredible comments about people appreciating my honesty and the openness that I have had on this channel with my own struggles. And so that's also a big reason that I want to start to create these helpful series videos because I think there is a lot that we can learn from each other. And that is honestly the part that I am enjoying about this YouTube channel the most is creating that sense of community and knowledge sharing and hopefully helping to pass along the things that I've learned or the mistakes that I've made so that it can benefit even just one person out in the knitting community who is maybe struggling with the same thing or not sure where to start. So thank you so much for all the comments. It really means a lot to me when people leave them um, and you know hopefully we can just continue that discussion over time. All right, let's get into the main knitting content for today. So the very first thing I wanted to talk about is the blouse cowl that I have started. So I mentioned in my last video that I have the blouse number two for my favorite things knitwear on my needles since September and I had essentially thrown it aside in favor of other projects, but it was something that I wanted to come back to to finish in my winter knitting plans for the spring. But I really felt like I needed some motivation and a few people had mentioned that they were interested in a potential cowl for that. And based on all the response that I got from the last video, it was clear that there is a quite a big group of us that actually want to knit either blouse number one, blouse number one light, or blouse number two from my favorite things knitwear. So I kicked off last Monday, January 22nd, the finish that blouse cowl over on Instagram. And there will be three prizes for that. It's going to run from January 22nd to March 31st. All you need to do is post a photo or reel on Instagram, use the hashtag finish that blouse cowl, but also tag me goodknits underscore so that I am notified and I make sure to share your posts but also to enter you for one of the prizes. I'm finding the hashtags right now on Instagram are a bit finicky and I'm not necessarily seeing everything that comes through. So please just don't forget to tag me so I make sure to actually enter you in for a prize. So the three prizes, uh, they're going to be chosen at random from all the entries during that time. And you can enter with a work in progress or a finished object so long as it's posted within the time frame. And first prize is going to be a 25 euro gift card for Olivia and Oliver Fibers. The second prize will be five stitch markers from Firefly Notes. And the third prize will be any one pattern from My Favorite Things Knitwear that you choose. So those I think are pretty great prizes. So for the blouse, I will show the current status of mine. So this is my blouse number two. And I really love this pattern. Um, it's quite an easy um, to memorize pattern. I think of eight row repeat. Um, in September, I got to the point where I had attached the body, but I never kind of continued beyond this. Another nice detail of this specific style is she has this side seam which goes down, which also does make it a little bit difficult to memorize because every second row it changes, uh, but it is quite easy to knit. Uh, and I think once I dedicate some proper time to this, it's not going to take too, too long to finish. I just need to get to it. So 
Also for the Cal, I forgot to mention, I did start a group chat over on Instagram. You are not obligated to join it, but if you'd like to, please just send me a DM on Instagram and I will make sure to add you into that chat. Uh, and it's really just to share pictures and motivation and talk through any places where people might get stuck on their patterns so we can offer each other support. So if that's part of what you like about Akal is having that more community aspect, then that's where you can find it. So hopefully a few of you will join the Cal and I really look forward to seeing all your beautiful projects and also finally having this one off my needles. Then moving into the actual whips that I am actively working on right now, uh, I mentioned in my last podcast episode that I had finished the body finally of my camisole number nine from my favorite things knitwear and I wasn't really feeling a huge amount of motivation to wrap that one up so it would probably just put aside for a while and then this weekend I really needed a break from all the body ribbing on my Monday sweater. So I decided uh, in a burst of motivation that I would start one of the armholes. So this is knit on two millimeter needles. You are meant to pick up, I think around on my size, small 154 stitches in the armhole. And then you do a bit of stockinette and then bind off on a bigger needle, fold over and sew down the um, armhole trim. And that then gives you this really beautiful finishing detail, which is very nice. And one of the biggest reasons that I picked this pattern. However, um, when I picked up stitches for this sleeve, I, could not doing so you're meant to pick up every two of three stitches on the armhole so that is what I did and I did not end up with the correct number of stitches so I was originally around 15 or 16 short I went back to halfway uh, picked up a few more but still ended up 10 stitches short on the armhole decided I would continue because the armhole before you add the trim feels like it's quite wide. So I figured I could probably handle having a few less stitches. And because you're on these really tiny needles, it's quite hard to tell how much stretch you're getting as you're working on it. So I did all the stockinette, I bound off, well and actually first, Stockinette on two, milli two millimeter needles is very hard on the hand, um, especially for such a wide circumference where you have so many stitches to do. It's not just like knitting a sock where you're kind of going back and forth and making progress. This was really, really hard. So I did finish it in a few hours one night, but my hands were incredibly sore after. Then the next day I bound off on the three millimeter needles and started to do the sew-in trim. And I tried the top on before I started to sew down and it is tight. Like there's absolutely no give on this thing, <sighs> which then I was like, okay, I'll continue. I th I'm pretty sure it's still gonna fit. I obviously started to do the sew-in trim here, which oh, is so painful and it's going to take so long to do this and this is just one armhole and then you still have a neck and another armhole to do but as i was working on this i was like okay if i think back to my 2024 intentions i said when something feels wrong i'm going to trust my gut and stop and start over or just stop in general and this is the perfect example of when I need to enact this intention. My gut tells me this armhole is going to be so tight that I'm not gonna wear this thing, or it's just, it's not even gonna work out. It's not gonna fit. And I'm gonna get through all of that trim to end up with a piece that I'm not happy with or literally can't wear, and I'll have to start over anyway. So I posted on Instagram, I was like, oh, what do I do? Like, is this going to be too tight? And I got so many comments saying, yes, it's going to be too tight. You need to stop. So 
I need to stop. I need to just pull this whole thing out, undo the cast off, and literally start over and make sure that I pick up at least the 154 stitches. But I think actually I am just going to do like one for one uh, on my pickup to make sure that I have a lot because also for my bust size, I think like I need that extra space around that area. And therefore I should just make sure I have at minimum the stitches that are account are called for, but maybe even a few extra. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this top. I'm not sure I have the patience or capacity right now to really properly finish this. I think I will slowly start to work out the cast off and get the stitches ripped out. But I think this needs to go into a timeout and I will come back to it. And I know in the end, I am going to love this piece because it's beautiful. I mean, the finishing details of this pattern are what absolutely make it. And that's why people like talk about it so highly. But everybody that's worked on it has said how painful this part is. And I think it's probably gonna be one of those things where I just say like on a Saturday morning, okay, I'm just gonna finish this thing. And I basically work through the whole thing in a day or a weekend, or it's just going to sit in a corner somewhere forever and I'm never gonna finish it. I'm not really sure where it's gonna go. I didn't even expect to do this part this weekend. So I did get a burst of energy, but now I'm discouraged. And I don't think it's a skill level thing. Like I know that I can do this. The trim is looking quite nice from what I've already done. I know I'm capable. I just don't know if I want to, but this yarn is so beautiful. Just also I'm regretting my choice of such a dark yarn because it does also make it more difficult to really see the definition to knit down the stitches of the armhole. And I also found that on the body trim. But maybe also for this, I need to rip out the stitches, do a full wet block, stretch out the piece a little bit more, and then do the arm and neck because that will hopefully give a little bit more space as well so that it's already loosened up a bit before I add all the stitches and completely tighten up the arm and neck. What do you think? Should I wet block? Maybe I'll wet block once I finally rip it out. So that is my camisole number nine. Feeling a bit discouraged. If you have any words of wisdom on this, even just a, you can do it, uh, I would appreciate it because yeah, I am not really feeling the motivation, but if I don't finish this too, it will be the third summer top failure that I've had of every summer top I've tried to make in the last eight months. So I also, I don't want to feel that, like it's just another tank top that I, for some reason, couldn't accomplish. And why is that? I can make all these sweaters and I'm so happy with them. And then camisoles are just not working for me. So that's whip number one and the thing that is mostly on my mind right now. Then the other whip I have, which I've made a ton of progress on this month, and it has literally been my main whip by far, is my Monday sweater. So this is by Petite Knit, knit on four millimeter needles in a fingering and uh, lace weight or mohair yarn held double for DK weight yarn. And I finished the body on the weekend. I finally did the uh, ribbed bind off there, the Italian bind off. Um, for the most part, I also wasn't going to film a podcast because when I only had this project, I'm like, I don't really have anything super exciting to say about it because that's kind of the beauty of stockinette projects as well. There's not a lot to say on them sometimes because they just go so smoothly. So once I attached in the round, or sorry, once I finished the raglan increases and started working on the body, yeah, this went incredibly smooth. It was fast. I will say, I'm trying to find it. 
which is maybe a good thing if I can't. Um, I did mess up on the ribbing. Oh, there it is. So I had this issue where I think I had somehow accidentally stuck my needle through the middle of two stitches and so I ended up with this weird hanging thread over top of my stitches which I just dropped thinking okay well that's not anything but then my stitches ended up looking a bit wonky and I went back and tried to fix them three times so I just dropped the ladders and then laddered back up and I now have that weird kind of gap but honestly it doesn't look like I missed a stitch anywhere so I think it's just maybe the stitches being a bit loose from doing the laddering with a crochet hook and so if I maybe kind of stretch out the stitches next to it especially after blocking I think that will work itself out and if not then I'll go in with some additional thread and try to close it up a little bit but I do think blocking will help that quite a lot um other than that I think the only thing to say is I did start on the sleeve yesterday I think I've already done three of the decrease rounds I'm partly through the fourth I think the sleeve is going to go really really fast I've also decided for this sweater I am done with magic loop I really want to give DPNs a try I've only ever used them once on a Christmas ornament ball that I made a couple of years ago and actually that experience was quite nice I didn't really have any struggles that I recall other than casting on which won't be an issue here so once I get down to a circumference where I can no longer work completely in the round like I am right now then I want to switch to the DPNs and see if I prefer that experience so I realize I don't have four millimeter DPNs nor well I don't need three millimeter for this but I just at the same time bought three millimeter I bought some cheap drops bamboo needles yesterday online figure I'll start with cheap ones see how I feel also about working on bamboo because I'm worried metal would be a bit too slippery and I don't want my stitches to fall off and then if I am happy with double pointed needles then I will maybe invest in a slightly better quality set and start using that in the future but I'm quite excited to try DPNs on this and see how that knitting experience is because I personally always have a pretty big issue with the laddering in Magic Loop. I always end up with this column of stitches um, within this top part and then the bottom join, where no matter what I've tried, it's gotten a little bit better when I started to use Patty Lyon's um, method, but still I always have a noticeable kind of gap in that stitch round and it just bothers me in the final piece so I'm hoping this process will now help and fix that for me and maybe this is the way that I will now do all my projects going forward so stay tuned on that I think I can keep working on the round in this one for quite a bit and then probably closer to the bottom of the sleeve especially before the ribbing I will need to go down to the DPNs so hopefully they'll be here in time the last thing I have to say on this one right now is just um, the yarn has been really enjoyable to work with. I mentioned that last time, but because this is quite a rustic yarn, it has had a lot of little hay pieces in it, um, which sometimes can really poke you if you've been quite sharp. So I am finding I have to really pick those out as I go, but it hasn't been too, too bad. And I tried this on finally last week I did a fit check but yeah so I found like trying this piece on it's actually quite comfortable I don't think the yarn is really going to bother me on this and yeah that's my Monday sweater couldn't be happier with the color choice uh really happy with the yarn and I think just from my try on of this I'm going to be really really happy with the final piece so 
I will report back and hopefully by my next podcast, I do expect that will be a finished object because I have been working on it pretty much exclusively and I really don't expect sleeves uh, to take too, too long. Then the final whip that I have to talk about is the Berlin Scarf uh, by Paula Strick or Suzanne Muller on Ravelry. And I showed this last time. Oh. Okay, hang on. I have two projects mixed together there. Um, so last time I had done this amount, which was about 42 centimeters. And since then I have finished um, another two balls of yarn held together. So roughly another 42 centimeters, and I'm now on ball um, five and six. And I do expect I'm going to need some additional yarn to really make this long enough because right now, let me go back. So I only have really like two more balls to use, which is not going to be nearly long enough to get the full effect of this. So yesterday when I bought my DPNs, sorry, I at the same time bought two more balls of this yarn so that I have more than enough to also do the um, fringe at the end, which is kind of the statement piece of this. So I feel like, you know, if I really dedicate some time, I did this entire section in one evening of knitting on Friday. I just felt like working on this while I was sitting with my husband. So it was a super easy project. And yeah, I, I powered through quite a lot. So I think if I just dedicate a few more days, I actually could finish this quite quickly. But like I said last time, it's not my main project. It's just we are going into now, well, starting to feel like spring here. I'm sure that um, is a fake out. It probably won't be. I'm sure it'll get cold again. But it's kind of feeling like the season for this scarf is almost over. So if I do want any chance of wearing it this year, maybe I should just try to finish this one up. Not a lot to say about this one right now. Um, it's a very, very easy knit. Uh, it's done in the round, which I'm really enjoying for a scarf. And I expect this will be one that I make multiples of. Also, the yarn is brushed uh, drops, brushed alpaca, which is a very affordable yarn if you don't want to go with the sadness garn alpaca that's called for in the pattern. I definitely recommend just buying this yarn and holding double. You might not hit exactly the gauge. I know I'm not because I'm on the wrong needle size because I went down to six millimeter, but I think it's a really good option if you're interested in making this. Like I said, I have no acquisitions this week. I will have a little bit of yarn coming in um, ahead of the next episode, but it's been a pretty slow, easygoing uh, month of knitting. I do find, I said I wanted to be more monogamous and focused in finishing projects rather than having a lot of different cast-ons. Clearly I've stuck to that in January, but I will also say working on the same sweater endlessly has been a tiny bit boring and I am really like craving a new cast-on. However, it is very satisfying to see how much quicker a sweater project goes when I just put my mind to it. So that's been nice, but maybe it is about a little bit of balance and not having too, too many projects on the go, but enough that I still feel, um, I don't know, a bit more engaged and like I have different options. So I think for me, that's going to mean just maybe having a couple more accessories to work on because I really hit the stage where, okay, my Monday sweater was on the ribbing. The cami really needed all the trim, which I didn't want to sit down and do at night. And then I only really had the scarf to work on. And now the blouse number two is textured. So it's not something that I can just easily do when my husband's sitting next to me or we're watching TV. I really need to be looking at the pattern because of that side um, seam. So I think that's gonna be one where I just kind of work on it when I am alone watching knitting podcasts on a Saturday morning or something. 
but it is like a very particular project. So I would love to have one more stock and net interesting project that I can work on when I don't feel like these other things. Which brings me to a project that I am very seriously casting on, which was not part of my winter knitting plans. It should be more my spring knitting plans. However, I am wanting it for a trip to Sicily that my husband and I are doing with my dad and stepmom in May. And that is the Milady's Dress by Vertnet. This is a pattern that I have really had my eye on since last year. I love the look of it. But because it is quite a custom fit dress, like there's a lot of, you take your gauge swatch, you adjust your um, pattern directions and total rows based on whatever your gauge is. And it's really meant to be a tailored fitting dress, which is great. I did try to make the Milady's top last year. So I have some experience with how that pattern would be written. And if I hadn't messed up my gauge on that, that top would have been beautiful, but I made many errors, um, which I've talked about a little before. And therefore that top never came to fruition and I just gave up on it. But I do know what to expect and I think I could easily tackle this dress. The only thing keeping me from it is technically it is open in the front which means it's knit up more like a cardigan which is knitting and purling. I did see though that Hi DIY, um, who is on Instagram and also here on YouTube, she made the Cardi jumper same as me um, last year but because she didn't want to purl, she just knit in the round and added two extra stitches and then did an applied eye cord up the front and then applied the buttons. And I really like the way that her final piece turned out. And I think for this dress, that would work quite well. I'm a little bit worried that with the pure silk, it doesn't tend to like have a ton of give to it. So maybe the dress would be a little bit tight to get on if you can't open it. But I actually think I overall would prefer to not have the buttons up the front with the dress able to open because also from my Cardi jumper, I've noticed every once in a while a button will pop open, which I tend to wear uh, like a tank top underneath. So it's not a huge deal. But if you're wearing a dress, you definitely don't want everything to kind of pop open and expose you. So I think if I approach that pattern that way and just knit it in the round with a few extra stitches, I think it's totally doable for me. It will be a lot of knitting. It's on three millimeter needles with knitting for all of pure silk. But having the experience of the Cumulus Tee, I do know kind of what to expect with knitting that. And once you get to knitting in the round, once you're kind of through all the rest of the details, it's not too bad on three millimeter needles. So I figure if I start that in February, I could realistically have it done for May if it's not my main project. And that would just be a nice, fairly mindless, but still engaging um, knit to just do between other projects. If anybody else is thinking about knitting that, I'm definitely not gonna run like a cowl for it, but if you also have that on your list and you're planning to cast it on anytime soon, let me know and maybe we can just start a little chat and hype each other up a bit and be able to ask questions of each other. So let me know if that is something that you are also doing and maybe we can share in that experience together because I do think I will need some emotional support on that to make sure that I actually finish it. And if I don't finish it for Sicily, it's not the end of the world. I could make it for summer. We do have other trips planned over the year, but I think that's a good goal to have. End of May, have a spring dress. The other thing I'm not sure of is the Pure Silk has a really limited color range. And I know I don't want a really basic color like black or beige or white. I would really like this to be a bit more colorful, but I'm struggling with what color to actually pick for myself. Uh, I'm thinking the copper, which is what Innes um, knit hers in. And I think it's quite beautiful, but maybe not dark enough tone for me. 
I also really like the blue tit color. Uh, it's more of a vibrant blue and I think it's a little bit between the dusty blue and the petroleum. Or I'm thinking uh, Knitting for All is sold out of the petroleum blue, but I do really like that color and I think I can find it somewhere else. So maybe the petroleum blue because it's not completely neutral, but it's still kind of veering that way while still having color. What color do you think I should do? I'm also open to other suggestions. I thought about maybe the sunflower yellow, but I'm not sure it's totally me. The oranges I think are a bit too bright. I do like the dark cognac, but I think I'll run into a similar issue as the Stockholm slipover v-neck where it's just like that kind of, I don't know, middle ground brown that doesn't suit me. So I'm not sure that's the right color. So I'm really curious, what color do you think I should knit? And maybe I'll just go with whatever is the most popular. Cause I'd really like to get the yarn ordered for that. I think I'm gonna buy the pattern this week. It is one of the more expensive patterns that I've seen. It's around 18 euros, but knowing how detailed the tank top was for that, um, I know that there's a lot of instructions that are required to get that tailored fit. So I have no problem in that case uh, paying more because I know a lot of effort would have gone into actually creating that pattern. So I'm really excited to start that. It's a bit of a random cast on that I wasn't planning for, but I feel really good about it. And then absolute final thought for today. Um, I came across a book which my non-knitting friend put on Goodreads as something that she wanted to read. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds perfect as a knitter. And it's called Unraveling. Unraveling unraveling, uh, which is what I learned about life while shearing sheep, dyeing wool, and making the world's ugliest sweater. And it's by Peggy Ornstein. Um, I started this yesterday. I just got through the introduction and a little bit of the first chapter, and I really like the writing style. She talks about how during COVID, she decided that she wanted to learn how to shear a sheep and make her own wool. She was already a knitter. Uh, and just the first intro chapter is already like laugh out loud funny. So I'm really, really excited to dig into this one and I will probably finish it in no time. So I'll let you know how I feel about that, but I feel like there's a lot of readers in the community. So that's maybe a book that you haven't come across that you'd also be interested in. Uh, let me know what you think and also if you've read that one before. So that brings me to the end of podcast 10. Thank you so much for joining today. If you like this video, please, as always, uh, give me a like, add a comment, but please also subscribe so that you can see all my upcoming content and let me know if you have any ideas for future videos outside of just the traditional podcasts. Thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate all of you being here and the community that we're starting to form. And I will see you in the next episode. 